And there we are. So here we can see it's kind of a, it's a cheap looking forklift. Uh, they're actually very inexpensive. This thing's about 40 bucks at VAT19. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but you can see it takes a couple double A's. So we'll get the screwdriver out and take this bottom cover off. And I'll just kind of show you. Uh, this actually takes a nine volt. I don't have a nine volt. Just trust me that it's not great. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to do an upgrade on this. Um, so we'll first start with the disassembly. We'll go and take the battery box out or the battery cover out. And I'm actually, you can hear my uh, 3D printer starting. I'm printing a new mount for the servo. The first one I printed didn't fit quite right. So I made a few modifications and uh, changed it up. So you can see it takes three, three double A's. I'll actually uh, use my Dremel tool and cut this out. And then I have a small uh, 2S LiPo battery that'll fit in there. Uh, I've done one of these in the past and this battery worked pretty well. So kind of materials list so far will be a uh, 2S LiPo battery. Uh, again, I'll put a link in the description for all this stuff. Um, two uh, micro servos. Um, the last time I'd done this, I used just a standard kind of plastic servo, which works really well for the steering, but going all metal gears for the uh, lifting of uh, the mast, uh, you get a little bit more, a little bit more weight on there. So um, some metal gear servos worked well for that. Again, the micro size. Uh, we we'll use a, a dual motor controller. So uh, one will control the drive and one will control the lifting of the mast and we'll get nice proportional controls out of it as well as uh, the ever so reliable uh, Flysky uh, i6. So again, I'll leave a link in uh, the description with all the stuff on where to get these. And again, they're all off Amazon. Um, when you look at this, you have about a hundred bucks and the forklift and the Flysky and then, you know, less than $20, less than $20 ish and the rest of the stuff. So, you know, this is an under a $200 forklift when it's done, it's not bad, you know, versus spending a uh, thousand or more on one of the, the lessus or um, the Carson ones are out there, but you can, they're really hard to find. So let's start to break this down. Um, we want to be careful on disassembly. Uh, you really don't want to take the strings in this mast all apart. That's all going to be left alone. Um, we're going to add some LED lights to this. So you can see there's like a place where a fake light would be one on the back and a couple on the front. So we're going to put LED lights in there. And then I got an orange beacon uh, that we're going to add to that as well. So I'll need to put Okay, so there is the uh, thing mostly broken down. Um, we're not gonna use the battery box, so we're gonna pull that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, snip those wires because we're not gonna use those. And so like I said, we'll go over cutting all this out, making a hole so that the battery can fit down in there. So I'll throw, set that off the side and we'll look, so we'll put LED lights in that. Uh, now this, all this stuff, we are basically, we're gonna reuse the switch. So I'm gonna wire in um, a switch to that. So for right now, we'll just cut these off. And we don't need this antenna wire. We're gonna get rid of that. And then we'll take this old motor controller off. Wire so snip. That all gets thrown in the trash. Maybe save the screws for future projects. I just dropped one. And the last thing we're going to get rid of is this motor is for the steering. Um, it's actually not a bad controller, but or a bad motor setup, but the control is just very crude. It's just one way or another uh, with no proportional effect. So we'll fit up that micro server right down in there. So we're gonna get rid of this thing as well. Now, if you wanted to use that, you could just wire in another uh, motor controller, but 
Um, I kind of like the idea of a servo batter, a little more simple, straightforward. So we're going to get rid of that, get rid of that, and this pops off. So if you wanted to save this for something else, in the future it's just a motor with like a pinion. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is we're basically going to attach our servo to this. Now we don't need this spring any longer because the servo will keep this centered. So we're before that uh, kept it centered. And then, um, so I'll get my soldering iron out. We you will need a soldering iron for this. I'm gonna unsolder these leads from the two motors. Uh, I can't remember which one's which. Yeah, one drives the wheels, one drives the, uh, the forklift mast. So um, I'm gonna get my soldering iron warmed up and take those off. Uh, these little orange things, I believe they're called like a mauve, um, to kind of balance the inner, balance the electrical uh, signal between the motor. Um, if I'm wrong about that, don't uh, don't hurt me too much. I just know I'm going to leave them on there. Uh, and then, like I said, I will use this existing switch for turning power on and off. So I'm going to get the soldering iron out and get rid of those. Okay, so the soldering iron is warm, so we'll just. Just put some heat to that. Let the uh, uh, let the solder melt a little bit. And take those off. Put that to that side. Heat that up a little bit. You may need to put some solder on your tip so that it will uh, melt a little easier. And then while I'm at it, we'll get, take clean these leads off on the switch. Cut those so short. I should lift the wire on there so I can pull it. There we go. Okay, there we go. So now I am going to um, modify this uh, dual controller. I'm going to cut them basically short, uh, trim them, strip them, and tin the ends so that I can weld these leads direct, <laughs> weld, solder these leads directly onto the motor. Um, and so actually I've already done that ahead of time. So that is right here. So here we have this motor controller. Uh, kind of got them um, cut to length, got the end soldered, so we can just solder this right on there. Um, the direction really doesn't matter which way you solder them, because if it's backwards, we can just reverse the uh, reverse the direction in the radio. So, and then this will go onto our receiver. This is the second channel signal wire under our receiver. And this is power coming into it. So we will go ahead and solder these on. I'm just going to do positive on top, negative on bottom. Okay, so those are soldered on there well. Now we'll go to this side. Sorry, it's a little hard to see that GoPro. Got the positive soldered on. Kind of bend this the right way to get it down in there. Here we go. So, right now we can go ahead and test, uh, do some testing on that. So I will go ahead and uh, hook up the battery. And to hook up the first servo. And the second. So let me get my uh, radio on. Oops. So, obviously it's doing something. So I need to center that up. Oop. So let me... Let me center that up. There we go. So I did... Oop. 
Yeah, okay. So I have forward and reverse. Looks like the tire's off there a little bit. Need to seat that. And then we have basically the, uh, the mask up. So there's down and up. So nice, smooth, proportional control. Again, it's just a motor turning a, a string on a winch, so you know it's not the best thing ever, but we have a lot better control. And so, oh, get that centered. So the next thing to do is to mount our steer servo, and then I want to mount a servo in here to adjust this mask, because right now it's just springs. As you can see, it's just springs in there. And so I'm actually going to attach a servo up here and control this arm so we can control that. Uh, so if you want to tilt it back or tilt it forward, you have a little bit of control there. Now I will mention this doesn't, this is a very light, so it doesn't take much weight at all to uh, lift this up. And so um, I'll add some weights and BBs, like any extra area. Uh, I usually, one of my go-to is just dump a bunch of hot glue down there and start placing BBs. They're very inexpensive, uh, as well as you can pick up uh, lead weights with adhesive back. Uh, I buy these from uh, Harbor Freight. Um, and so these are almost too big to fit down in there, but you can start stacking these lead weights in there to give you more counterweight back there. Now we will have the battery in there, so that will help. So let's go ahead and uh, look at mounting our servos. I'm gonna turn this off, let's go and unplug this. But overall, here in the first 15 minutes of this, we have some success. So um, the next thing we need to do is to pull this out and modify this arm because I'm going to take basically one of these servos and just glue it right in there and then we'll have an arm coming off this and that arm coming off that is going to hook inside here to um, allow that uh, to push this forward and backwards so So I got the uh, servo mounted to the 3D printed part I've got um, for the servo mount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill two small holes in the bottom of this, set this there, and screw the servo mount in from below. Uh, you'll notice the steering arm, it the servo is leaning back a little bit. So I need to take the steering arm out and uh, shave it down just a little bit so that I can get a screw in there. So I'll take this serving, steering arm out. So this upper brace um, holds the wheels in place and holds that steering arm. So when you take this apart, the wheels are going to fall off. I kind of feel this all kind of apart. So we'll take that off, pull this off the top, and then you can see how the wheels are attached to the steering arm. So what we're going to do is, it's too tall, we're going to shave it down a little bit and then make sure there's a hole in there so that we can hook this steering arm onto that. Uh, we've got some uh, clearance issues at the moment, so by doing that, that should give us enough room to mount that in there. Actually, it goes like this, so we're going to put a screw down there, so we're going to shave that down. So I got the uh, arm mounted, got it kind of scruffed down a little bit and kind of got it drilled out so that I can put a screw in there. Like I said, I got this servo mounted, so I'm going to set it basically right in here. There's kind of a, a cavity that that fits within. And I'm going to drill two small holes from the bottom. Well, actually, I'm going to drill them from the top down. Uh, the place where the holes aren't extremely important. Um, so let me go in one of my small bits here. And so I'm just going to get it right inside there. If you guys watched my uh, brooder video, on the D11, I kept commenting how I couldn't find my Dremel tool. I finally found my Dremel tool. My wife took it. She was doing some stuff in our camper. And now my little electric drill is missing. So <laughs> looks like I need to go check the camper. But this is just thin plastic. So I can actually just do this by hand. Actually, I've got... If I can find it, just the tool for that. Kind of a little handheld drill. This desk is a disaster. Oh, 
right here in front of me. So I'll just use this to kind of drill it. Yeah, like I said, just in small plastic and the placement's not too critical as long as it gets inside there. So <clears throat> I'm gonna put uh, all this back together and then I'll uh, screw that servo in last and put that screw in from above. So I'm actually going to get a, uh, I need a small block. Where's one of my blocks? I'll just use one of my pallets here. <clears throat> Sorry. Made a bunch of pallets, just kind of some scrap wood. So bought some uh, uh, popsicle sticks, you know, in the craft section of Walmart, and then had some uh, spare wood left over that I just put in my table saw and cut down and uh, glued some pallets together. Got us some scale pallets for this. So I'm going to set that under there to kind of get this height right as I put these wheels back in. So I'll set that in there. You know what? Some uh, tweezers might be a little. All right, I got it. So that is a little, uh, a little hairy. So it might frustrate a little bit the first time I've done this once or twice. And I guess I've not done enough to make it real easy. Just so we'll put some screws back in there. I ought to figure out a way. Oh, <laughs> my arm's upside down. So. I gotta take that back apart again. I'm gonna try to do this with leaving a couple screws in to make that a little bit easier. Just leave two screws to hopefully keep the wheels in place. But I put this in and my arm's upside down. So you can see that little knob sticking up. I need the hole sticking up so I can put my screw in there. So I'm gonna, I think I might be able to do this not fully disassembled. That might be a trick for next time. We'll see. There's one out. Now I just gotta be able to get this. I did. I was able to get it out. So let's flip that over. Okay, so next time I'm not going to take all the screws out. Let's get this fed in there. Maybe I should make this a what not to do video. There we go. That's in there. Got that side on. Okay, that's a good trick. So now that's back on together, let's put the rest of the screws in and then we can mount that steering servo. So that took a little bit longer than I expected. I'm going to speed that up, which you've already seen it speed up, sped up. Okay, now that's going to go right there, gotta find one of my small little screws, and let's 
start that screw in there first a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to throw a couple uh, screws in from the bottom. I'm just using uh, some screws that come in the normal servo packages. And it's just going into that 3D printed plastic. So I really don't have any holes I gotta line up. Uh, just get a sharp screw and it'll start in there just fine. Alright, so now let's test our steering. So we'll bring the battery back over. So I need to uh, center it up a little bit. Oh, too far. But now you have a lot better steering control over that. So, I'm pretty happy with that. Because before it was just a straight left, straight right. Looks like I need to tighten my mount down a little bit. But overall I'm pretty happy with that steering. So, that's going to work.